Hi everyone. Uh, in today's video, I take up a set of another five questions uh, that are often asked of uh, ship's master candidates when they go for their oral examination. So let's get started straight away uh, with question number one. I hope you have seen the previous uh, four parts. Uh, if not, then the links to those videos are in the description section below. So today's first question is that as a master of a ship, uh, you are expected to report certain meteorological phenomena. So what weather features would you report? So as a master during the voyage, if you observe the following meteorological phenomena, we are only talking about meteorological phenomena, so you don't have to talk about anything else. These are the ones that you will report. Firstly, if you cite dangerous ice. All right, so what do you mean by dangerous ice? Dangerous ice is something that impacts the navigation of the vessel or it can cause serious damage to the structural integrity of the vessel. It can damage the hull or the keel. Uh, uh, so if you cite dangerous ice, and this is especially if uh, you are not expecting to cite it, then you must report it to the ice patrol or the uh, the authorities that monitor the icing conditions in that particular sea area. The second thing that you must report as a master is that if you observe storm force winds of force 10 or over, especially for which no report has been issued. So of course, if you have been issued reports or TRS warnings or you are transiting areas where you are expecting uh, strong winds, then you don't have to report uh, winds of Beaufort force more than 10. But if you are not expecting to encounter such strong winds, such strong force winds of force 10 or over, then you must report it to the meteorological office so that they can inform the other ships in the vicinity as well. The third thing that you have to report is if you encounter sub freezing air temperatures that could result to ice accretion on your ships. So if ice accretion, you know what ice accretion means. I have shown you or uh, talked about a video on that as well in my last video on master's orals preparation. So ice secretion is when ice gets collected on your ship's structure, all right, especially the superstructure or the upper deck of the vessel that may lead to some stability issues. So if you encounter such sub freezing air temperatures that are leading to or could lead to ice secretion on your superstructures, then also you must report it to the appropriate authorities. All right, so these are the three meteorological phenomena that you would report as a master if you encounter them. The second question is, what is the function of the certificate of registry? So as a master of a vessel, you should be very aware of what a certificate of registry is. So certificate of registry, and I've shown you an example here, it is uh, generally a mechanism for establishing a ship's nationality. All right, just like you guys have your passports belonging to your country of nationality, uh, then a ship must also have a certificate that is called the certificate of registry. And that certificate basically uh, informs the authorities on what nationality is of the ship, what is the nationality of the ship and it is for regulating shipping is registration of the ship in a particular state. So it registers the ship in a particular state and that becomes the nationality of the ship. By linking a ship to a state, the system of ship registration indicates that the state has the right to protect that ship in international legal matters. The certificate of registry is issued by a government to establish the nationality and the ownership of a vessel. So, of course, the sh ship owner uh, decides pre -hand or beforehand on what nationality will the ship be registered under and the government then authorizes the ship owner to register their vessel with them and gives them the nationality. The certificate is held by the ship owner and it indicates the registration of the vessel and it gives full details of the vessel. As you can see in the certificate, the official number, IMO number, the name of the ship, description of the ship, length, breadth, depth, where was it was built, you know, all that is there. A copy of it is often displayed on the ship's bridge as well. The general mechanism also, it is not a document of title to the ship. So don't think that if you have the certificate registration, you become the owner of the ship. No, it is just like a passport. Just like you cannot use somebody else's passport. Similarly, just because you have a certificate of registry doesn't make you the owner of the vessel. Question number three. In the event that the vessel is found to be dragging her anchor, what action would you take as the master of the vessel? So you are no longer now the 
officer on watch. You are no longer the second officer or third officer or chief officer. You are now the master of a vessel. So you have to answer the question like a master. So if you observe or if your officer tells you that the anchor vessel is dragging the anchor, that means the vessel is not holding to its anchor. The initial action as a master would be to pay out more anchor cable. So say you are riding on the port anchor or riding on the starboard anchor, then you would pay out more of that anchor, pay out more cables and hope that the flukes of the anchor dig into the ground and help you to hold on the vessel to the anchor. However, if the ship continues to drag, then you let go of the second anchor at short stay. You don't let it go at long stays because uh, two anchors um, let go together. There they can be a foul house. They can get fouled with each other and that becomes a complicated process. Having it at short stay and letting the second anchor go under power and having it at short stay prevents the two anchors from getting fouled and also helps you to pay out the exact amount of anchor chain cable that helps you to um, hold the vessel to anchor and yet at the same time uh, prevent any kind of accidental fouling. All right. However, even if after you have paid out the second first anchor and then you have let the second anchor go at short stay, even if still the anchor dragging continues, then it is better that you recover both anchors, you uh, uh, recover both the anchors and then you move to a better, more sheltered anchorage, you know, because it could be that you have let go of both anchors and still the vessel is dragging. That could be because of strong wind forces or strong waves and strong currents which are uprooting the anchors from the seabed and not allowing you to settle. So then it's better that you uh, heave up both anchors. That was the word I was looking for, heave both anchors. And uh, you go to a more sheltered anchorage where you have uh, forces, wind forces of uh, much lesser. They are not as strong and that will allow you to hold the anchor. All right, and then you stay there till the weather becomes better and then you can come back to the original anchorage. If in coastal regions it is sometimes possible, then seek the lee of the land and gain shelter there. So what is lee of the land? Lee of the land is the area which protects you from strong wind forces. It is that area of the land where the wind forces are not that strong. The next question is when operating a stern propulsion, at what moment in time will you be able to detect that the vessel has gathered stern way? So as a master, of course, when you are boarding the ship or unboarding the ship or you are carrying out some kind of maneuvering operations, you will be using the uh, astern propulsion. All right. So astern propulsion becomes very important at that point of time to adjust the vessel to its right position. So at that point of time, you know that the vessel is uh, gained stern way when you see that the wash of the propeller, I tried to show it to you through this uh, sketch. I don't know if it's helpful or not, but the propeller wash that comes out from a stern of the vessel, those are those three uh, straight lines, they reach the bridge. All right, so they reach bridge. So you can see the propeller wash has reached the bridge. You as the master will be standing on the bridge wing looking out. Uh, you will be giving the astern order. The ship's officer will put the engines astern. The engineers will get to it immediately. But you know that your ship has gained a stern way. It doesn't have any more ahead momentum uh, when you see the propeller wash has reached the bridge. So as a master, when you're standing outside the bridge wing, you see the propeller wash has reached the bridge. You know that now the ship is gaining a stern way. And you can then, depending on, of course, what is the situation, if you want to check the momentum, then you can um, ask the engines to be stopped or you know, give a head movement or whatever is the situation at that point of time. The last question is following a test on the emergency steering gear. The connection pin shears during the disconnection from the steering flag to the bridge. The bridge is then informed that steering cannot be returned until a new pin can be manufactured. So as a master, what options are available to you and what actions would you take in open sea conditions? So we talked about emergency steering gear testing at sea in one of my last videos when I was talking about uh, orals preparation. A question has been asked of master candidates, so I'm not going to cover that. In this video, I'm only going to be talking about such circumstances where the loss of effective steering control is experienced extremely uh, and that limits the master's actions. You know, there's not much you can do if the pin has been damaged and it needs to be manufactured again. So such actions as they may be will depend on a variety of factors and not least the weather and the geography. So of course it depends on the weather conditions you're experiencing and where you are at that point of time. But in all options, the ship should ideally display a not under command light 
and shapes until steerage control can be regained. All right. In congested waters, so not under command lights, as you know, two red lights in a vertical line. And in congested waters, the vessel would stop engines and then not attempt to proceed without effective steering because otherwise you are putting your vessel in danger. So the first option would be if you have twin screw propeller vessels, you can then attempt to steer by engines alone under the not under command signals while in open or non-congested waters. So this you can do only if you are in open sea. All right. And then because other vessels will also have enough sea room to stay away from you and you also have enough sea room to play around with. Option number two, stop engines and wait for the repairs to be carried out. Option number three, stop engines and anchor the vessel if the depth of the water permits you to do so. Especially if you are in congested waters or you are in narrow channels which allows you to anchor, you must have a contingency anchorage that's identified in your passage plan, especially when you are transiting narrow areas, narrow channels or you know traffic separation schemes uh, because that helps you to deal with such kind of emergency. In all cases of such a situation arising, the ship's position should be obtained. You should be monitoring the ship's position. A statement has to be entered in both the ship's logbook or rather the deck logbook and the official logbook, the master's official logbook. Maybe in certain circumstances, it may be necessary to make a security message, a security S-E-C-U-R-I-T-Y, security navigation warning signal. So just like you have Mayday, you have security and urgency as well. So you can make a security message. And with repairs underway, it would not be anticipated that tug assistance would be required. So hopefully you should be able to get this thing done quickly. But if you feel that your steering is being hampered, which it will be in some cases, then it is better that you stop the engines, get the repairs done quickly or anchor the vessel, get the repairs done quickly. Um, but if in open sea, you can maneuver around. So I thought uh, these are some of the questions I should take up because uh, they are often asked of master candidates and master's candidates sometimes uh, they are not able to uh, discuss all the options, especially because when you go for oral examination, you are panicking. So I want to list out everything. I want to write everything down. Often students ask me that why are you reading from the screen? You know, it's I can also read, but that's not the point. The point is always that I'm giving you notes so that you can make a note of it. Sometimes people don't understand my accent. So it's important that I write the stuff on the screen so they can make their own notes and understand what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you for watching, guys. All the best with your studies. And I'll keep putting up videos that will benefit your learning. Let me know if there are any specific topics that interest you. Bye for now.